The Sheikah are likely the most mysterious group in the Zelda series. While Breath of the Wild gave some insight into the Shadow Folk, for the majority of the Zelda timeline they've remained behind the scenes, serving the royal family in secret. Most Zelda games feature a select few Sheikah at most, like the handmaiden and protector of Zelda, Impa, or as the princess's alter ego, Sheik. Breath of the Wild revealed that, sometime long before the game, the Shadow Folk were an immensely powerful force in Hyrule. A technologically super advanced civilization who had saved the kingdom countless times, but in recent times were banished by the King of Hyrule, living a more rural life in Kakariko Village. Out of the 3D Zelda games which take place in Hyrule, the Sheikah appear in Skyward Sword, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Breath of the Wild. But interestingly enough, there's no sign of them at all in The Wind Waker. At least, not at first. But the closer you look, the more evidence there is that the Sheikah didn't disappear after the cataclysmic Great Flood, but continued working behind the scenes as they've always done. Let's have a look at the flooded world of the first game in the adult timeline, at the footprints left behind by the elusive Shadow Folk. So, the first evidence of the Sheikah we encounter in The Wind Waker comes in the form of strange, stylized versions of the classic Sheikah eye symbol, and what appears to be shields decorating the ship at the peak of the Forsaken Fortress. The fortress itself during the game serves as the base of operations of Ganondorf, housing his minions, Bokoblins, Moblins, Miniblins, even the great Helmorok King who he commanded to scour the ocean for girls with pointed ears, who were imprisoned in the fortress's jail. The fortress is a giant stone structure, twisted and stark, rising from the depths of the great sea and one of its most iconic features is the broken remains of a ship atop the fortress, torn in two and now used as a lookout and headquarters for Ganondorf. Interestingly, on either side of the door of this ship we have what appears to be two Sheikah shields, featuring some sort of stylized version of the Sheikah eye symbol. So, were the Sheikah the original owners of the fortress before Ganondorf threw them out? Tetra mentions that the fortress's original owners were a group of no-good pirates who she used to compete with, but they were just small time. It seems unlikely that the Sheikah, the elusive shadow folk and loyal servants of the royal family, would devolve into a group of no-good small time pirates who compete with Tetra. What seems far more likely is that the Sheikah eyes here are just trophies, like the swords, the skulls and the myriad of anchors. These were likely just taken during a raid or a plunder by these pirates, and there's no deeper meaning to the Sheikah eye here. But the Sheikah presence in the Wind Waker doesn't end here. We're just getting started. Next up, our quest for the Sheikah takes us east from the Forsaken Fortress to the bustling merchant town of Windfall Island, where things get a little more mysterious. Windfall Island is one of the most iconic locations in the game, a haven for culture and life amidst the endless blue of the Great Sea. Beneath the town's famous Ferris wheel, slotted neatly among the red and white brick streets, are a cafe, a camera shop, a bomb shop, a jail, an auction house and a school. At first glance this bustling port town hides no Sheikah influence, until we look closer at one of the town's most inconspicuous inhabitants, the school teacher, the joyous Miss Marie. Miss Marie runs the School of Joy on Windfall Island, a small classroom where she teaches the local children, and has been for 20 years. She strives to inspire creativity in her students, but apparently the most creative thing she's ever done, according to her figurine, is invent her own flamboyant pink hairstyle. Mrs. Marie has a love for jewellery, in particular joy pendants, small butterfly-shaped necklaces that Link can collect featuring a design which includes four hearts forming the butterfly's wings surrounding a small blue gemstone. Mrs. Marie loves teaching but struggles to discipline a group of students known as the Killer Bees, who skip class to, I don't know, run around windfall I guess. Link can beat the Killer Bees in a game of hide and seek to earn their respect, which causes them to want to change their ways and apologise to their teacher, mentioning that her birthday is coming up soon and that she loves joy pendants. Link can then give her a joy pendant from the Killer Bees, but she'll mention that she'd actually prefer around 20 of the necklaces, though it'd only happen in her wildest dreams. 
If Link collects this mountain of butterfly jewellery and brings it to Mrs. Marie, she'll reward him with the Cabana Deed, gifting him ownership of her own private island and seaside cabin. Here's where we can begin to see a more sinister side to the joyous, fluorescent-haired Mrs. Marie. For 20 joy pendants, she'll give Link a private island, an island which hides a dark secret. Mrs. Marie's oasis isn't just a sunny resort. The hut is actually built over a deep labyrinth of sewer-like tunnels, which can only be accessed through the cabana's fireplace. At the end of this forgotten maze, Link finds either a Triforce chart or a piece of the Triforce of Courage itself, depending on the version of the game. But blocking his path towards the end of the labyrinth, Link finds a dark room with two Redeads, ancient reanimated corpses lurking in the silent depths of this maze. Why would Mrs. Marie, the joyful schoolteacher from Windfall Island, own a seaside cabana hiding a shadowy tunnel network with ancient tribal zombies and a piece of the Triforce itself for a map to find one? Could there be a darker side to Mrs. Marie? Is there something that the candy-haired, caring teacher isn't telling us? I think that, whether she knows it or not, Mrs. Marie is acting as a vessel for the Sheikah. I think that with this teacher, we're actually seeing evidence of the Sheikah's plans, even if they don't appear in the game. Before we even visit the cabana, we can tell that there's something strange about the fact that this private island is owned by Mrs. Marie. She mentions that, although she is just a mere teacher, she owns a cabana in a tropical oasis. And we know for a fact that she wasn't the original owner, since in the HD remake when she gives Link a treasure chart, she'll mention that she found it somewhere in the cabana a long time ago. And for whatever reason, the game makes a point of emphasising how old the cabana deed is, mentioning that it's written on ageing parchment, and that it appears to be quite old. Though Mrs. Marie admits to getting on in age, it's likely that this cabana deed and the island itself are far older than she is and that whoever built the cabana and the labyrinth below it, built it long before this windfall teacher owned the island. The island itself, even outside of the dark maze below, seems to show that Link was always the intended owner. The butler, for example, is some sort of enchanted painting who appears on both sides of the front door, as well as within the cabana itself. He's initially rude and dismissive towards Link, but after you show him the cabana deed, proving ownership of the villa, he'll recognise you as Master Link. It's almost as if he knew at some point a Master Link would arrive here, saying, I'm so pleased to hear that name. The labyrinth deep below the oasis is one of the few places in the game where Redeads can be found, the undead horrors normally found in graves or other places of burial. I've got an entire theory video on the Redeads, check that out with the link at the top right or the description, but a massive amount of evidence points to these reanimated corpses actually being creations of the Sheikah. Either willing Sheikah volunteers or unfortunate prisoners prevented from death by some form of powerful magic, raised to serve as stoic guardians of the deep. In The Wind Waker, Redeads can be found in the minigame like Savage Labyrinth, the Earth Temple and the Earth Temple section of Ganon's Tower, and the Private Oasis. This is by far the strangest place we've ever seen these horrors appear. Why would Mrs. Marie's holiday resort be hiding these denizens of the dark? Unless Mrs. Marie is working for the Sheikah, whether she knows it or not, to protect the Triforce of Courage and ensure it reaches the hands of someone worthy to be the Hero of Time's successor. This theory seems pretty outlandish until we look closer at Mrs. Marie. The friendly, jovial teacher doesn't seem to be Sheikah herself, lacking the iconic pointed ears and red eyes, but she appears to be wearing a dress adorned with stylized versions of the Sheikah eye symbol. And in the original game, if you give her 40 joy pendants, she'll reward Link with her prized possession, an item so rare that there's nothing like it in the world, the Hero's Charm, a Sheikah relic. The Hero's Charm seems to be similar in function to the Lens of Truth, the famous Sheikah artifact from Ocarina of Time. Like the Lens, wearing the Hero's Charm will allow Link to see the truth, see what he couldn't before. It shows Link the health bar of the enemies nearby, and like the Lens too, its design is based on the Sheikah eye symbol itself, 
two Shika eyes together connected by a golden mouth. So Mrs. Marie, the head teacher of the School of Joy, not only wears a dress adorned with Shika symbols, but also owns an ancient, powerful Shika artifact, as well as a private island, despite being only a teacher. For the price of only 20 joy pendants, the teacher will sell Link this luxury island resort, which is much older than it seems to be. This island hides a dark labyrinth, containing either a fragment of the Triforce of Courage or a map to one, as well as Redeads, some of the most terrifying enemies in the series, possible creations of the Sheikah tribe. Whether she knew it or not, I believe Mrs. Marie was working for the Sheikah, perhaps just by handing down family heirlooms without knowing their true worth, or perhaps she knows more than she lets on. Even in a game where the Sheikah have seemingly vanished, with not a single true Sheikah appearing, their influence can still be seen. If Mrs. Marie's cabana was originally created by the Sheikah to house the Triforce of Courage or the Triforce chart, with Redeads as guardians, it would be a fitting callback to another subterranean Sheikah dungeon, the bottom of the well from Ocarina of Time. This undead infested labyrinth lies below Kakariko Village, housing the Lens of Truth. Like the Cabana's Maze, it's an underground, sewer-like series of tunnels, guarded by the undead. If Mrs. Marie's Cabana is truly Sheikah in origin, it's a neat callback to one of the most iconic Ocarina of Time mini-dungeons. With this in mind, it makes sense that when Mrs. Marie grants Link the title deed, she warns him not to tell anyone, to keep this a secret to everybody. What do you guys think of this theory? Could there be a Sheikah secret to the joyous teacher, Mrs. Marie of Windfall Island? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like, or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.